Hi everyone, this is a short video that will help you to understand exactly what you need to do to complete your scientific literacy projects for Anatomy and Physiology 1. It would be a great idea to watch the other video um, in your Blackboard shell on scientific literacy, which will cover all of the important concepts we want you to know about um, in terms of scientific literacy, this video is very specific to the actual project. So let's dig right in. Um, first, we should probably define what we mean by scientific literacy. So I pulled two definitions for you. One is from the OECD, and it was published uh, quite a number of years ago. Um, and they say scientific literacy is the capacity to use scientific knowledge to identify questions and to draw evidence-based conclusions in order to understand and help make decisions about the natural world and the changes made to it through human activities. Now, more recently, Anne McKenzie for the National Science Teacher Association indicated that scientific literacy means understanding how science is done, what is science versus non-science, and how to evaluate claims we are exposed to on a daily basis. Now, if you really examine each of those definitions, what you'll realize is they are essentially saying the same thing. So over a 20 year period of time, we have been consistent in how we define scientific literacy. But I think this 2023 definition is written in very easy to access and modern language, and it really applies to these projects. Um, and by the way, what I've done here is what we often do in science. We pull um, a more original piece of research and then current research um, and report that data so that we can see whether or not there's been a change over time. Okay, so what does scientific literacy look like in a course like AMP1? Well, we want you to be able to apply scientific thinking and use your knowledge that you are learning in the course to real world situations. And then we also want to make sure that you know how to find credible sources of information. This is really important in the scientific discipline and really in all academic disciplines. Um, and we want you to be able to identify those sources appropriately. In science, that's usually using APA style, um, although we are a little bit flexible in this course. And then in other classes um, in other disciplines, they might have different styles that they want you to use. So just be aware of that. And lastly, we want to make sure that you're comfortable making decisions based on relevant and appropriate evidence or data and not just on your opinion or on other people's opinions. We want to base it on the science. All right. So in this course, you are going to complete two small projects. The first project is designed to provide an opportunity for learning how to do the project and all of the pieces of the project and to practice doing that so that for project number two, you can just nail it and do it really well. So project number one, you'll get an overview of the project. You'll learn about what we mean by credible sources of information, how to cite those sources, how to collect, organize, and spot patterns in the evidence or data that you collect. Um, and then ultimately, you'll use that evidence to draw a final conclusion. And then in project two, which will look very similar to project one, um, we will assess your mastery of that scientific literacy, um, specifically to solving problems, as this is part of the college's general education learning outcomes that we need to measure. And you'll get more information from your specific instructor on when these projects are due and how they will be graded in your course. Um, but you should have everything you need within your Blackboard shell um, to understand and complete the projects. All right, so let's take a walk through project number one. Um, there are a number of parts to these projects. So the very first thing you're going to see um, is an infographic that makes some type of medical claim. Um, these infographics are collected from various social media or other online um, sources for you to evaluate. And then you're going to be asked, 
what claim is the infographic making? So we just want you to look at the claim, uh, excuse me, look at the infographic and determine what is it that that infographic is claiming and just write it in a, in a single clear sentence, what you think that infographic is trying to say. And then we want to know, do you think using your current knowledge, do you think that claim is true or false? Um, and there's no right or wrong answer here. You might change your mind by the end of the exercise or you might prove yourself right. Either one is okay. Um, and then also we want you to think about what information would you need in order to assess the value of the claim being made in that infographic. So what questions do you have? What information would you want to know in order to determine if in fact that infographic is accurate or not. So you're just going to give us that in this space here. Then we want to remind you of all of the things that you've learned already in the course. So we're going to do a little prior knowledge activation. So we're going to ask you some questions about content from the course. You should absolutely use your textbook to answer these questions um, or just to check that your memory is accurate. Um, there's no need to get these questions wrong. We want the right information here. It's, you know, this isn't a test. This is a learning exercise. So you'll have a series of questions about the topic relevant to our course. Um, and then there's a thinking question which kind of makes you take the things that you know and then kind of put them all together and come up with a, an answer to this sort of thinking question or applied question. These are kind of fun. Um, and then we'll move on to the identifying credible sources. So let's look at this piece here. So here we have a list of potential sources and you are going to identify those sources that you think would provide credible evidence. Um, so credible sources tend to be peer reviewed. In science, we love peer reviewed um, sources. We love primary sources, things that are written by the person that did the research. Um, we want them to be written by experts, people who are trained um, and experienced in that particular area. Our um, good sources should provide citations for any information that isn't coming directly from their own research. We would want to know where it's coming from. Sources that are not so credible, um, if it's not peer reviewed, then we're not sure, right? We don't know. Peer review means other people in the field have checked it and believe the information to be accurate. Um, if it's not peer reviewed, then we're, we don't know. Um, but that gets a little tricky because, for example, some newspapers and some magazines, maybe like Discovery Magazine or National Geographic Magazine, they're not peer reviewed, but they are fact checked by their editorial boards. Um, and so they can often be good sources of information. But the problem is we just don't know. Um, secondary sources, this is when they're written by someone that didn't do the research. Again, it could be really good, like a National Geographic magazine um, or, po you know, uh, Popular Mechanics or Popular Science, I think it's called. Um, but again, we're just, we can't be 100% sure. Um, we don't always know who the writer is. Is the writer in a secondary source, are they an expert in the field or are they a journalist um, who's learning about something entirely new? And then that might mean that there's errors in their writing. Um, also, if there's no citations, that's, that's always worrisome because then we don't know where they're getting the information from, so we can't check it for validity or accuracy. So you're going to select um, the ones in this list that you think are credible. Um, and then maybe in class, you might have a discussion with your instructor about which ones you feel really good about, which ones you definitely don't feel good about, and which ones maybe are somewhere in the middle. Okay, and then the next thing you're gonna do um, is you are going to evaluate some sources of information for the project that have been provided to you. So you can see there are six links here and you are going to indicate which ones you think are credible and why you think they're credible. So you'll click on each one, give it a quick read, and then you can use what we call the crap test to figure out if this is a good source. Is the source current? We do mostly like to have current sources so that we know they're up to date. 
is it relevant? Is it on the actual topic or question? Does it answer the question that you're asking? Is it an authority, someone you feel you can trust, someone who's an expert, someone who has documented background in this area? Is it accurate? Do you feel confident the information provided is accurate? Are there citations indicating the accuracy or validity of the information being provided? And lastly, what's the purpose of that source of information? Are they trying to convince you to buy something they're selling? Because that's always a little worrisome. Or is it someone who just wants to convey scientific information and is doing it in an appropriate way? So you're going to indicate which of these sources you think passes the crap test. Is it a credible source? And then identify why you think it's a credible source by indicating these um, characteristics here in the space provided. Then from those sources of information, the ones that you decided are credible, you are going to pull at least four pieces of evidence to address the claim made at the start of this project. Um, and those pieces of evidence can be for or against the claim. Um, but it would be nice if you would group them together. So put all the ones that support it together, put all the ones that don't support it together. That just makes it a little bit easier for you to see if there's any pattern in the evidence or data because the next thing you're going to do is describe the pattern of the data. What trends do you see in the data? And so you're going to write a couple of sentences there. And then lastly, you are going to draw a final conclusion. So do you accept the infographic shown at the start of the project and why or why not. So you're going to justify your um, claim about that infographic using three to four sentences. And you want to include some of the evidence that you listed um, in your project and describe the pattern of the evidence that you already described. So it's going to feel a little repetitive or redundant, but that's how we do it in science. We like to make sure that we are making it clear why we are saying what we are saying. So you are going to review the data evidence that you collected from the credible sources about that medical claim at the beginning, and then you are going to draw a conclusion. Is that infographic accurate or not? And then tell us why, using the evidence that you collected, why you think it's accurate or not. So no just, you know, making an opinion. All right, and that's really all you have to do. I did just want to show you one little thing that might make your life easier. On the second project, you are going to evaluate some sources, but you are also going to have to find some of your own sources. So I wanted to remind you that you can always click on the IRSC library in your Pioneer portal, and then you can type in what you're searching for into the search box. And I did one for project one here, and here's what came up. So it was super easy. It took me two seconds. And look at this. It actually indicates if it's peer reviewed. And that means you know right away that you are getting a credible source. So that makes life really easy for you. Um, and then you also already have um, all of the information you need to cite it. Um, and in the folder in Blackboard, you should see a link to a free citation generator um, and you can use that to make your life even easier to drop these citations into your project. So hopefully this helps um, and you can rock out these projects and get a great grade and learn something cool while you're at it. Thanks guys.